Okay, this is lab six, finding G, the first part. This is the part that probably takes people the most time, but it's not that hard. Okay? Now, first of all, we're going to do things just a little bit differently than it says in the lab book. In the lab book, it says we're going to use blocks of wood to put the track at, a, at an angle. We're not going to use blocks of wood, we're going to use these jack stands. Which one are we going to the jack stand? Okay? Jack stand. It, it's got an adjustable screw so you can go up and down and get the right angle. Okay, back on me. What's the angle that you need? Well, it doesn't really matter what the angle is, as long as it's between about 5 and 10 degrees, and as long as you know what the angle is. All right, so how do we determine the angle? Well, it's, it's basically pretty easy. It's like a triangle. You just need two sides. We're going to go for the hypotenuse and the height. Okay? Then this angle right here is going to be, we'd say, well, the sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Okay, so how do we get the hypotenuse? Let's start with that one. Well, it turns out that, why don't you bring it over here? Put some, come on over, pick it up, pick it up. Over here, come on over the top of it. If you look at the top of the track, it's got numbers. All right? These are measured in centimeters. It doesn't really matter as long as we keep using centimeters. And we can say we're going to start from here at 10, and we're going to go all the way down to 210. Or if you have the track the other way, 10 to 210 this way. That's a length of 200. All right? Now, how do we get the height? Well, the height, what we do is we measure the height right here, and it's right at 10 centimeters, and it's oh, 25.2 centimeters here. And then we measure the height all the way down here at 210, and that's 8.2. So 25.2 minus 8.2 is 17. So we've got a height of 17, a length of 200, do some trigonometry, we can figure out the angle. Now come on back over here. Well, now I'm going to show you how to do the experiment. Now the experiment, it says to take the cart, car, release it, and let it go all the way down here. Hopefully somebody will catch it down here. And you get good data that way, no doubt. But there is a way to get a little better data. And watch this one here. Now what you do is, you got to be a little careful. You have to have somebody at the top there too, which I don't right now, but I'm good at this, so I hope I do it right. Otherwise this is going to be really embarrassing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get twice as much data because I'm going to push it up and down. Now, what's the acceleration as it's going up as compared to when it's going down? Well, as it turns out, think about this, it's not hard. It's always due to gravity, so the acceleration is always the same. It never changes. Pretty easy, huh? That way you get twice as much. Now, what do you, why do you have to be careful when you do this? Well, you don't want to hit it so hard that it comes up and hits the motion detector. You, will, you want to keep it from about here because, first of all, the motion detector isn't going to work as it gets closer, closer to it here. Now, since this is a track lab, too, for the track part of the lab, you probably want to have the motion detector on narrow cone as opposed to wide cone. Okay, so that's all you, this, is, this one's an easy lab. Now, it's an individual lab, and I'll talk more about that. But that's the hardest part of the experiment. All right? So.